Hmm. That's never a good sign, is it? We've got no inverter power. Well, let's go find out why. Mm -hmm. Might have something to do with it. Unplugged. Not mounted. Where is it? Well, it's on the floor. In pieces. Because it died. Stop working. Just take it indoors and have a look. So, what happened was, I was in my house on Saturday, just, you know, having a normal day. Had the, um, the water heater switched on. Only the, it's the um, two kilowatt heater that heats the hot water under the sink. It's only a small heater, heats enough to fill the sink once. Draws just about two kilowatt. And then suddenly all the electric started, well, switching on and off very rapidly and it was upsetting the the changeover switch was just rattling and yeah so I quickly went outside to find out what was going on and looking from this end all I could see was flames inside the inverter up at the top somewhere so I as in this silly setup that I've got I haven't got a big Isolator switch to isolate this from the battery quickly if there would be any problems Which isn't good because as a real it's been using Some standard part cheap inverters and things you probably want a way to disconnect them from your battery quite quickly If something does go wrong Because it's a lot of power available to it to go up in flames So I thought right we'll undo the end screws take the lid off And we can have a good look inside so inside this, uh, what is it, a whatever inverter it is, yeah, it's quite a good layout, there's a lot of components in there, you can see by the way they've made it, it's just stacking several different circuits together to produce the amount of power that was required. What happened was, I'll get the camera off the stand so I can show you. So you have to ignore the fact that all the MOSFETs aren't screwed to the side of the casing because I've had this apart. But I had two of the uh, MOSFETs, these two here. Is that the two? Yes, that's the two. Sorry. That's those two MOSFETs there had blown up. You can see the the, um, the explosion stain all over the uh, side of the casing there and a little bit over there. You can tell that the ones I've changed because they've got green sleeving on them rather than the black sleeving the rest have got. So I already had two MOSFETs from my previous inverter that I killed by putting mains into it rather than mains out of it. It didn't like that and that killed it. I was going to repair that one but I ended up getting this bigger 24 volt one. Um, I kind of might be able to see, let me get a torch, yeah you might be able to see some of the burning to that wire and the black marks up the side of the capacitor, ignore that piece of, um, what do I call it, thermal pad. But regardless, I thought, right, okay, that happened, it is what it is. Maybe I can get away with just changing those two burnt MOSFETs. So I tried to power it up again, and I've had no luck. I put it on the um, bench power supply, and with 10 amps of supply current, and it's just a dead short circuit. So when I look around the board, I can't see why it would be a dead short circuit. So I thought I'd take it apart again and have a better look, but... Is there a chance that those two dying have blown the whole set? Have oh, I got to go get my component tester on every single one of them to find out how many died? I don't know. Maybe somebody who watches the channel might know a bit more about how to fix this. Has it killed the logic side circuitry, like these little boards or whichever ones actually control it? I assume this one's probably got something to do with it, as it's got a uh, little potentiometer on it, which might be for adjusting the voltage or something. I don't know. What I find funny is, they never take the stickers off the beepers, <laughs> they just leave them on. So yeah, so take off after washing, with the amount of flux inside this thing, it was never washed. So, ideas, if you've got any ideas on what I should be checking, whether I get, I probably will have to get the component test and do every single one of these. I'll tell you, we'll pull the board out and have a better look. Now, some things are relatively easy to disassemble, it's just case of removing screws 
four screws on each end will get the top half of the casing off which is over there that piece and do the other four and you lift this side up so you can get to it if this has been live and it was working you might find capacitors are charged but this has been dead for a while and then the circuit board the one you've undone all of the clamp plates how do these MOSFETs on so obviously all of the MOSFETs are clamped with little clamps you can see the big stain on the inside of there now they're all clamped to this and using the casing as a heat sink on both sides so you've got to end all of them the little metal brackets if the inverter has been working before some of this stuff may still be quite spicy and electrically yeah that's the basic the internal guts of it and I look around I just can't see anything else that's failed we have a look at the bottom side of the board nothing's looking too bad under them it's been down I can't see anything more that needs to be addressed kind of a close up look was that section there I had to extract and put the new MOSFETs in as you can tell like this flux and I bodged it together quickly to try and get it working but looking around the rest of the board I'll give you the bottom half first there's some dirty flux marks everywhere but all like these big transmission wires are, are all looking okay focus yeah, but I can't see anything else on this back side of the board it looks like it had a problem so yeah that's where we are with it I currently have no power inverter and I'm back on using the mains so what this means is that why not let's do another solar upgrade <laughs> we're going to swap from a 24 volt like this one to a 48 volt try and drop the load on the batteries a bit and see if we can eke a bit more power out of them but no it's quite a shame like, there is a lot of fuses in this board you've got one two three four five six seven eight ten fuses so i'm wondering if i would say pull the power out to this section which could possibly be that set of diode whether that would work i don't know let's just have a look right. up comes the bench power supply burntish leads because i've been making a mess of stuff so I connect that one to negative that one to positive oh 10 amps straight away pinged it 0.8 of a volt so we've got a dead short circuit in there it's not happy so should we start pulling some fuses get a pair of pliers to make it a bit easier All right, so first these ones 50 amp fuses mind you don't often see a 50 amp blade fuse like that well I don't anyway not in automotive stuff or machinery try it again what do you reckon same problem same problem all right we'll pull some more if I can get to them they're so blooming close together Try again. Let's just get the uh, red lead. Ooh, same problem. <laughs> oh. It'll probably work once I've pulled every single fuse out of it. Try it again. Same problem. Yep. Yeah. Might even get more magic smoke out of it at this rate. <laughs> just keep it running till we find out where the smoke comes from next same problem so pulling the fuses out isn't helping us we've still got two more fuses to go and once we pull these out we've disconnected basically everything what's going to happen now and that's it so yeah I reckon it's probably blown every single MOSFET on the board just try connecting one back in bit by bit and see what happens short circuit 
short circuit, short circuit, short circuit, short circuit and that was the last one we tried. So yeah we've got a dead short circuit somewhere. What will we have popped? Do you reckon every single one of those output MOSFETs is dead? That's going to cost a few pennies worth, isn't it, to replace that many? I've done two, and I've got another three. <sighs> I'm going to have to get the um, my component tester from work back here so I can plug it in. You know what I mean by component tester? One of these things. I mean one of these things. Transistor tester, component tester, you just connect it up via the um, ZIF socket, via three leads. And yeah to the component it probably might not work in the board but it's not going to take me five minutes to desolder them and it just tells you what it thinks this component is if it doesn't think it's a MOSFET it's probably dead yeah I just can't see anything else that looks like it's had an unhappy time so I don't know what do I try next some big diodes in certain places Big ten ampers. Let's see them in there. Where are they? Somewhere down there. You can just see them down there between those two caps. Where that's suffered. I don't know, just see. It's a shame to completely call this dead. It doesn't look like too much went wrong, but I've already got a replacement coming. But uh, it'd be nice to get it going again. Maybe use it for some else. Or give it to somebody else who needs it never mind there we are for now so now it's back together till I get round to doing some more to it and debating whether I post this video now or do I do the component tests and come back to it uh, I don't know it's not a big issue for me because I've got I'm waiting for a new inverter to arrive so one of this um, unit's main issues was the fact that it got so flipping hot before it turned its fans on. This hot outer casing be at nearly 65, 70 degrees across the MOSFETs before it even decided the, it needed its fans on. So yeah, whether it's just running too hot, ever get it working again, I should probably wire them permanently somehow because I don't like the idea of them being not permanently running when it's under any load at all because it yeah, just got too hot but that's why it failed, I don't know and anyway I might post it up now anyone got any ideas? You might better help me out thanks for watching